Hi, I'm Pete Rulon, and this is Tanisha Barnes. And today we're going to talk to you about the very popular light painting technique. We're going to give you some technical information, and then we're going to go out back in the studio and have some fun and play yes. with lights and show you what it kind of looks like. First thing you need is a camera. Now, your cell phone probably will not work because part of this requires you to set a shutter speed that most cell phones don't allow you to go that slow. So you'll need some kind of camera that has a shutter speed setting. Now, it has a mode dial and I will, for light painting, set my mode to manual. This way I can set the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. First thing to consider is what shutter speed. Shutter speed dictates how complex the pattern will be. The longer the shutter is open, the more the light trails will show up on your video. So you balance that so it's as complex as you want it, but keep your shutter speed short. Now there are other situations that may dictate a fixed shutter speed. When you first go to your manual and figure out how on manual setting do you set shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Yes. On these cameras, shutter speed is normally in a fraction. When you want to set a two second shutter speed, you turn the dial as the numbers get smaller and smaller, then all of a sudden you'll see something like two quote, four quote, eight quote. The quote, that means that your shutter will remain open for eight seconds. The other thing you might want to do if you're making a pattern is to have a remote shutter release. Which is my technique. Which That's, is your, yes. yes. I absolutely have to have the remote shutter. Um, what this allows you to do is you will, when you're on manual, you'll get a shutter that is B, as in bulb. And that means that as long as you hold this button or this button down, it will remain open. So if you're making a pattern, it's easier than say, count one, two, three, four to the person making the pattern. It's easier to use a remote thing. And when the pattern is complete, That's you let go of the button. Let go of the button. And it's just a lot easier. Bulb, if it's a pattern, if you're doing kind of a motion blur thing, then decide how long gives you a pretty pattern, but not too complex or not too simple. I just out of good practice set my aperture at five, six, and I use my ISO and I manually set ISO to adjust the ISO until the lights are bright enough, but still maintain color. Right. You, they will look underexposed typically on the back screen, but if they're bright enough to see on the back screen and they have color, then you've gotten your exposure correct. Right. And painting with light is a great art form. It's definitely a technique to utilize if you want to put a light of a heart behind a couple, if you want to photograph a professional DJ and he has lights behind him. So these are all techniques that can be very much utilized. But I do want to say that if you are photographing a couple, photographing an individual model, make sure that they're aware that this could be a lengthy session because it's going to take several tries to get it right. And then also, too, that your model has a lot of patience and the ability to stand still because there are times that your person behind you with the lights is going to be moving, but the model has to remain perfectly still in order for this artistic image to be created. And, and the last piece that I dictate is you have to have a tripod. Yes, very much so. You're, there are techniques where you take lights and you move the camera, but generally for most light painting, you want your camera as stable as possible. 
Or you, find a stationary shelf or a stationary rock to put yeah, your anything. camera on. But your camera needs to be stationary in order to achieve a good painting with light image. Okay, I want you to sort of address this. Light painting, you can exclude the painter. Yes. And if you're going to do that, I suggest a black outfit so they disappear. Uh, typically speaking, when it comes to photography, most of the time myself as a photographer and then also my assistant is typically wearing black. Absolutely to utilize these things, but also to be um, so that you're not noticed, especially in a wedding setting or things like that. We typically do wear a lot of black so that our movements aren't as noticed and not so much caught on the camera. So I do say wear an all black outfit if you're assisting that day or if you potentially may have to switch places with your assistant and have them fire the camera while you do the lighting technique. And, so and, all black is going to work best. And sometimes you want to see the person that you're light painting. Yes. Either the one who's doing it or the person you're painting behind or around. And that will require a light that is adjusted to get them correct. And what I suggest is have them stand there once you've decided on a shutter speed and all those settings for the light painting. Then you stop painting, you photograph, and you get the light on the subject at the right intensity to get them in the picture. Yes. So you can always go back in and change your settings just a, a slight bit so that you can Photoshop that person back in if need be, but they're going to be several different images and you may, you may merge those images together to make one great photo, but typically speaking, have your assistant bring an additional outfit or what have you in case you do decide to do something where someone is creating a circle and someone else is being pulled through that circle. That's a technique that can be done, but you're, they might need some color within their clothing in order for the camera to pick up well. So if you're painting a pattern behind a model, they need to stay as still as possible Absolutely. if they're lit. If they're, if they're lit, they, they're going to have to have some patience and the ability to stand still for, you know, a lengthy amount of time. Um, when you have a model, um, a good rule of thumb is to have them stretch. Even if you're going to have them in a stationary position that day, physically, your body can get very sore, very tired, make them bring a snack and a drink of water, things like that, because it can be very tiring. Even if you're just standing straight with your arms out, it can get very tiring after a while. But also too, within that, make sure your model is getting some breaks here and there. So that way too, they can take a breather, relax, and then, that way you are both good working partners. You want your model to have a great time too. And you want to pick an area to do this that is as dark as you can get it. If you happen to have a black cloth backdrop or something yes. behind them, that just removes it. Now, I'll go quickly to Photoshop. In photography, the noise is most evident in the dark areas yes. of the image. So when you are doing post-processing, I take the black and make it black. Yes. And so the, all the noise disappears and you don't have this ugly ISO noise right. to deal with. Now explain to them what the ISO noise that you're talking about. Because those that are new photographers might not realize what they're looking at within their camera screen as being called noise. Okay. So those that are just starting if, if you if, if your picture looks like it's made by colored golf balls. Right. That's ISO noise. Exactly. Um, or, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just blotchy. A lot of blotchiness, a yep. lot of little tiny, looks like tiny little pinpoint colors. Sometimes you see a lot of reds within that noise. Um, or that's how I perceive it visually. Yeah. Um, so if you move that and turn that black up just a little bit, you probably will diminish all of that noise. Yep. And maybe even need to go in and smooth some certain areas out, but you want as much dark as possible. Yep. And, and I really want to stress that this isn't like take your camera, point it, shoot it, and you got your image. Right. This is a iterative circle process. Uh, look at your screen. If you know what, how to look at histograms, that's even better. And just kind of evolve till you get it the way you want it and have reasonable expectations. Right. And evolve is, is a good word. That is a great term because what's going to happen is 
those first few times that you do painting with light, maybe don't do it as something that you're getting paid for with a client. Do it as practice sessions because it really does take some time and not every session is going to turn out. There are times that your camera runs well, there's time the lighting works out well. So don't be super hard on yourself. Painting with light is an art form when it comes to photography and it can take a while to learn exactly how to operate everything within where you're going to photograph, if you're gonna do something outside, not all the light will be the same every single time you go to that location. So keep that in mind and keep, keep trying. Keep going again and again and again and just give yourself time to learn the technique and learn your camera because this is where you're getting into a little bit more difficult settings on your camera. And so why don't you just give them a little idea of, of what kind of lights can we use? So there are, anything that has a light trail is, is my go-to. Um, I have LED lights are my favorite because yeah. they do run you low cost on batteries. You can get LED light strips and put them on wood. You can put them on a heart shaped piece of wood so that you can dot the heart as you want to. Um, so LED lights are actually my go-to. Um, now you can also do it with, there's fire techniques that you can utilize. So fire is a great technique. Um, I have seen some really cool photos done with light bulbs yep. that have been, that have, you've just used a flashlight, um, glow sticks. So something that has a continual glow to it. Um, I have not had good luck with a lot of things that are flashy. If they're super flashy and they don't have at least a three to four second light on them. So if it's an item that I can slow the light source down on, but the ones that are super, super flashy and fast, I have not had good luck with being able to actually paint a design with them. I move them very slowly. Right. Um, and the other thing that I love is these little kitty Star Wars um, sabers, light lightsabers. Sabers. They're fun. Yes. Because you can do a lot of things because you not only can point it at the camera, but you can do it sideways and get very different effects. So a lot of times what I do is when I get home with an item that I think might potentially be utilized for light painting, I go to my bathroom and I sit and spin it or I twirl it around and see if I'm going to get a slight light trail in the dark. And then I know it's something that I can bring into the studio and play with. Um, I do suggest if you're just starting out with the painting with light, get yourself some inexpensive um, glow sticks. Glow sticks are a great learning tool technique when you're first starting out before you invest in wood to make a certain design or anything like that. Get yourself some glow sticks, zip tie them to a piece of wood and see if your technique and your cameras are going to work with what you're trying to achieve. Glow sticks are a good cheap way to get started in the painting with light process and like I said you can take a zip tie and tie them to the wood. Yeah, and LED, LED light strips are cheap. Yes, LED light strips are a great cheap thing. Um, I've seen some great, um, really beautiful techniques with newborn babies um, using just a soft glow of an LED light. So that's always a good, um, the little $10, $12 lights off of Amazon string that has a little battery pack. You can use them for fairy lights. You can use them to swing and play. So that, those are always a great tool to have in your studio. And, and there are... A number of YouTube Facebook groups on light painting and I can't begin to do some of the stuff that they do on those groups it's just but it is a source of excellent ideas now I have seen some recent videos there are some more updated cell phones that I've seen recently that can capture you know things like the moon and I've seen people be able to do some techniques but they're probably not gonna be the extensiveness of what you can actually do with your digital camera. So absolutely try it. If you, if you can achieve it, I say go for it. If you're a camera photographer or a phone camera photographer, see try what you it. can do, give it a try. That's how we all learn. But absolutely share those techniques if you get it. <laughs> okay, this is sort of the technical side we're going to go back into the studio and play, and we'll record that. You will find a behind the scenes video separately of us in the studio playing with lights. So today I have brought my light whip, 
with, uh, with me, and I use it at music festivals. My husband and I love to go to music festivals, and this kind of keeps me occupied. I've actually only been doing light whipping for about a year, so forgive my technique if it's not where it should be, but we use it to play here in the studio and to show you guys different interesting techniques with the lights, um, just an idea of how you can start to begin to make shapes. And we also have our wonderful assistant behind the camera today, Miss Debbie, and so she'll be popping in and out um, helping us with making some light trails and showing you guys how to make some of these techniques. Well, let's go.